introduce Sheriff Paul Babio. How's everything here? We heard you needed help to secure the border. Well, if you listen to Janet Napolitano, everything's just fine. The border's more secure than ever before, right? Thank God somebody's hiring her and sending her right to California, right? Now, if I had it my way, she would have been fired because she's failed to do her job. And I wanted to, the opportunity to come talk to you not only about uh, the current situation with the unsecure border, some of the concerns that we have, not just for illegal immigrants that are here, for the Ill illegal, but the drug cartels. The drug cartels that we're fighting, I'm gonna give you some statistics about that. And then also, uh, as was mentioned, I have 20 years in the Army National Guard. Probably I had the opportunity to serve our country in Iraq. Uh, but as, and I think even more importantly, uh, to be the commanding officer down in Yuma for a year and a half. I actually lived there. And yeah, absolutely, all our friends in Yuma. And we got it right there. We secured the border. We have a 97% reduction in illegal entries and drug smuggling in the Yuma sector. And I'm going to give you what the solution is. So I reject Janet Napolitano's uh, proclamation that, that she made privately and then uh, that the border can't fully be secured. That's not true. Because we have, uh, we're the greatest, most powerful nation in the world, right? And for the lady in charge of border security to say that it can't be done, that's why I believe that she should have been fired. So I want to read uh, a letter I sent to President Barack Obama. I've sent him a lot of letters, but I, I never, never seem to get any response from this guy. And, and maybe, yeah, well, maybe you'll understand a little bit more once you hear what the, the body of the letter is. And I addressed him formally, politely. Everybody likes to say that we just beat up on the president, right? I said, dear Mr. President, even. I was talking about uh, this specific issue. It's about our Second Amendment rights to bear arms. And to defend that right. And I'll get right into the meat of it. I said, our nation has seen several tragic attacks against innocent adults and children by criminals armed with guns. Because of these attacks, many politicians, including yourself, have used these tragic events as a means to push their agenda to control guns. America has seen an even higher number of our citizens killed by impaired drivers involved in automobile collisions. So if you didn't know that. And I said, why are you not seeking to remove vehicles from our roadways? Is it because you realize it's the drivers who are at fault and not the vehicles they were driving? And, and that's where I go on. The same analogy holds true with these shootings. It's not the guns that are at fault, but rather the criminals who use them. Do you honestly feel that any criminal or someone who is mentally ill will obey an executive order made by you related to gun control? So that could be the reason why... You know, we know the answers to that, right? But I went on to say further down, Mr. President, if you attempt to carry through with your proposal, it will hinder the ability of good citizens to defend and protect themselves and others against those who wish to cause harm through the use of deadly force. Your actions would turn many good citizens who wish to maintain their God-given constitutional right to bear arms into criminals. I am writing you this letter today to inform you that any law or regulation created by an executive order of your office, which is contrary to what the Constitution of the United States of America says, shall be deemed as unlawful and shall not be carried out by myself or anyone in our sheriff's office.
folks, I don't know how, how much stronger you can get with telling the president, who sometimes thinks that he's the king, with a wave of his royal hand, and he has now, I think, 30, 32 czars. How on earth do we have czars in the United States of America, right? And the fact that we would refer to these leaders who have not only elected, they haven't even been confirmed by the Senate, and yet they have legitimate authority and power in our republic. And so here, the trampling upon our constitutions, our rights and our liberties, is very real. And this is what I'm very concerned about, and what I'm speaking out about, not just in Pinell County, but throughout Arizona, and any chance I get for people to listen, our fellow citizens, because this is, this is the situation that we're in. And I don't think any time in any of our lives, whether you're in your 40s, or you're older, or if you're younger, this is a time when we all need to stand up and defend our liberties and our freedoms. And you've heard different speakers today speak 